Hello, Meg here from I Teach Stamping, and welcome to the Friday Flip. So the Friday Flip is where we take one project idea and we flip it into something completely different, keeping the parts that we like and changing up the parts that we either don't like or the parts we need to to make it fit for our occasion. So let's go ahead and dive in by taking a look at our inspiration card. This is a card I made a long time ago, like years ago, and for some reason I held on to it. I never sent it out, probably because I either didn't like it that much or because I knew there were parts of this card that I wanted to duplicate on something else. I think this came from an old card kit or something. But anyway, um, you can tell my paper crafting novice because it was sticking, up, sticking off over the edge and not over here. So anyway, so you get to see one of my original cards. But let's go ahead and dive in. Let's change it up. Let's keep what we like. And let's turn this into a cute little thank you card. So the first thing that we're going to do is our dry embossing. And sometimes whenever you're embossing white cardstock that's not as thick as your color cardstock, you can get what I call feathering. So let me bring in this right here. And right here, hopefully you can see it, just kind of, it distorts your cardstock a little bit. And so one of the tricks I use if I'm going to be dry embossing white cardstock is just to take a piece of scratch paper. So this is literally just typing paper. I actually do, does anyone still use typing paper? So I guess printer paper is more like it. Okay, so I'm gonna put it into the stars embossing folder. And this time when we zip it on through the big shot, we're not gonna have that feathering take place on our cardstock. It's just gonna give us a nice, smooth and easy texture. So let's take a look. Yep, so we don't have any evidence of that around our stars. Perfect, that's exactly what I was hoping for. And then you've got some, you know, dry embossed printer paper, should you need it for anything else. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this out and move it out of the way because that's literally all we need the big shot for. And the next thing we're going to do is our stamping. So I'm going to bring in an extra piece of white cardstock. And I'm using a little thank you, a little scallop thank you in my Marvina Bay ink pad. Uh, and so this thank you stamp comes from the label something stamp set. We're going to get that stamped and that is all the stamping that we're going to do. Now we are going to do a ton of punching and we are going to work with some scraps of cardstock. So I lined up with these little guys. Little 1 8 inch strips all the time when I'm making my cards. And I used to throw them away, but then I started keeping them. I'm not really sure what I was going to do with it. So I'm going to share with you one of my favorite things to do. And we're going to do this now so it's got plenty of time to dry. I'm going to bring in two pieces of Whisper White cardstock. One of them is the one we just dry embossed. They're both going to be 4 inches by 5 and a quarter inches. And we're going to start with my daffodil. Now these are 1 8 inch strips that are longer than we need them to be, but that'll make trimming them perfectly so we don't have what happened on my inspiration card happen on these. So when you have these little strips, cut them later, not before you put them on. So I'm gonna pick this up, get it moved into position and get it nice and straight. Since they're narrow, they tend to go a little wonky, a little bit easier. All right, let's do this on the other ones. All right, so now we're ready to go on a punch of palooza. I've got some extra pieces of cardstock. Get my glue off there before it's on there forever. And so let's go ahead and start. I'm going to use a whole bunch of different circle punches. I'm going to start by punching a daffodil delight circle that's a one and three quarter inch circle. So we're starting with that. Then I'm going to bring in a piece of Bermuda Bay cardstock, and I'm going to start with that same one and three quarter inch circle punch. I don't need this piece, so I'm going to set it way over to the side. I can use it on another project. I'm going to bring in the two inch circle punch next. So what I'm doing is getting that nice ring. I think it's much easier, or I know it's much easier, to start with a smaller circle and work our way out. All right, then the next thing we're going to do is bring in some Daffodil Delight, and I just want a one inch circle. And then I'm going to use some Calypso Coral cardstock. So this is a great time to use up any scraps that you have. So I'm going to start with a half inch circle. I don't need the half inch circle, it can go to the side. But I do want the three quarter inch circle to again give me that nice little ring. And then I'm gonna want a one inch circle. All right, so we have all of our pieces here. The only thing we have left to punch out is using the seven eighth inch scallop circle and line it up with our little sentiment guy. 
or girl. Okay, so we have that. We'll get that punched out. So we're gonna work kind of quickly because I want to, again, let this liquid glue dry. So I'm gonna bring in my new favorite adhesive. The more I use this stuff, the more I love it. Get it started though, right? The thing that most people struggle with the fast fuse is they try to make it work like snail or other tape runners and it doesn't. So the next time I use it, I'll show you a little tip. I'm gonna take this little ring guy and use some more liquid glue. Let him get all dry and happy. And do this next one here. Okay, that's all the liquid glue we need. Woohoo! I love liquid glue, but boy, does it make a mess. All right, let's bring in this fast fuse again. So when you're pulling down with it, then you either want to turn it or pull in the opposite direction. So I kind of did like a check mark. And I've had a ton of people ask me about that. And it's funny because, it, well, anyway, I won't get into that. But that's all you got to do. And then we're going to take this. We're going to stick this onto our little yellow circle. This is going to get a dimension on the back. I'm just going to layer that onto our card. All right, so now I'm going to bring in my snips. Do a little trim. Do a little trim. Go ahead and take care of these at the same time. All right, and let's go ahead and bring in our card base. So the base for our card is gonna be crumb cake, four and a quarter by 11 inches scored at five and a half. And on the inside, I'm just gonna put this piece right here. And you can add some of those extra circles that we didn't use if you want. And then on the front, I'm going to add this piece right here with the stars and of course all of our fun layers. And then let's go ahead and bring in the inspiration card because there's a couple thing, other elements I wanted to keep, but I didn't want it exactly the same. So I loved having the bow because if you know me at all, you know that I love bows, but I also loved having the buttons. So rather than having the big bow up here though, I wanted to change it up. So this is something that I did a little bit ahead of time, but what you want to do is grab your 10 second bow maker and your linen thread and you've noticed that I've got it on the smallest section here so I'm going to take my linen thread and make the same kind of bow and just get it super nice and tight so that's how I'm going to have that teeny teeny tiny bow and then you pull it off and you trim off your tail so I just went ahead and did that ahead of time and use liquid glue to set them onto two calypso coral buttons and then I just kiss those onto some mini glue dots and I'm gonna take these and drop them on our card. So we kept the bow and the buttons. We just used them together. And then the bows are the same size. I can trim up my tails to be the same size. And just like that, our cute little card is done. So let's go ahead and take a look. I love it. All right, so here's our inspiration card. We kept a lot of the circles. We added a little scallop to it. We added some background texture. I don't even think the big shot was in existence when I first made this card. And then we added the inside, and of course we dropped the bows down to the other. And that's all there is to this week's Friday Flip. If you like the Friday Flip, please be sure to like it below. Also be sure to share it with your friends. Head on over to iTeachNavy. Make sure that you are signed up for my exclusive mailing list where I share tons of paper crafting tips and tricks with you. Again, I'm Meg from iTeachNavy. Thanks for watching and have a great day.